Welcome to a new vlog. Today I'm going to talk about a DIY uh, spot welder that I built, the advantages of such a build, as well as the disadvantages uh, or the problems I encountered during this build. So the idea for this project started many months ago. I was actually at a local uh, recycling uh, center to deposit some old electronics when I saw this uh, microwave uh, oven transformer sitting uh, right there on a the table. Like the guy in charge of the place literally took the transformer out of a microwave oven a few hours prior to my arrival there. So that sparked the idea in my head. I asked the guy if I can have the transformer. He said yes and that was the start of the, this project. Then I thought it would be cool to build a DIY controller for this machine and I started thinking about how to do it. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com who in the past months upgraded their manufacturing line so they are now offering 24 hours turnaround time for prototype PCBs for the same price of just $2. Prototyping is now faster and cheaper than any other place so it's definitely worth checking them out. I was going to use an OLED screen and it was supposed to have uh, many features uh, adjustments of settings but since my time was very limited I started realizing I was getting sidetracked and spending too many hours designing the custom controller board and I didn't even have the transformer ready. Now about the same time I discovered a ready-made spot welding controller board on AliExpress. It was uh, very cheap so I bought one of these it was uh, shown in Vollog 189. Now regarding the transformer, I think the one I got is from a microwave oven that was uh, roughly 800 watts in power and it gave me just enough room to make the required modifications on the secondary. There are certainly bigger ones that you can find and that, that will probably give you more space on the secondary. It's okay to get a higher powered transformer but if you go with a lower power one you might find it impossible to wind the secondary accordingly due to the limited uh, space. Now before continuing with this project let me take the time to warn you that we are dealing with high voltage AC here. There is a serious risk of shock and death if you make a mistake with this project. So do not attempt to build this project if you don't know how these things work and without proper safety measures. First you'll need to identify the secondary winding. Look for the part that has more turns with thinner wire. The next step is to remove the old secondary winding and I've done that by sewing one side of the winding with a metal saw and then hammering the remaining uh, wire until I removed it completely. During this operation you might also notice a uh, small piece which is called a magnetic shunt. Remove this to avoid any limit on the current because according to uh, microwave oven transformer theory the purpose of that shunt is to limit the current and we don't want any limit on the current we want high currents. For winding the secondary of the transformer you are going to need some heavy gauge wire but with a thinner insulation. For example I got this 16 square millimeter wire which is used for uh, grounding. This has an acceptable insulation thickness unfortunately I couldn't find thicker uh, wire at my local hardware store but I would uh, recommend uh, getting a uh, heavier wire thicker gauge uh, but watch out for the insulation so it's not very thick because that will prevent you from adding sufficient turns on the secondary of the transformer. There is some wire available on AliExpress from a seller it's uh, 25 square millimeters and that would be excellent for this project. Now should you decide to order from that seller get a 2 meter length of wire. In my case with the 16 square millimeter wire I was able to get 4 turns in my secondary and I, was, I used about 1.2 meters of the uh, available wire. Now you're going to need some way of terminating these wires and attaching some electrodes. I went the DIY route. I got these uh, thick wire tabs. Uh, these are for 16 square millimeters wire and it's unlikely you'll have the wire crimper capable of doing these at home but I just used a big plier to attach these uh, crimps. Remember this uh, 16 square millimeter wire will have an internal resistance and the longer you have it in, in the project and in the secondary the more you increase the losses. So keep the wire as short as possible up to your electrodes. 
I've also used some washers with uh, four millimeter screws on the end of the wires to create some kind of mounting point for the electrodes. I made my electrodes uh, from the thickest solid copper wire I could find um, at the local hardware store. It's about 2.7 millimeters solid copper. This is not the best idea because the electrodes should be made from a special type of copper alloy which is not what you find in regular wire. This means the electrodes I built are good for testing the machine but they will cause problems if you try to use them for the actual welding. So at this point you could also order some special electrodes from AliExpress or you could make them if you have access to better suited copper. However, you will also have to build some kind of mechanism to attach the electrodes. So at this point it starts to make sense to get one of those special spot welding pens that already has the mechanism for attaching the special electrodes that you also find on AliExpress. So I will place a link to one of those in the description below. I think it's a good idea to get uh, one of those if you're not very skilled with machining metal and building stuff yourself. So now we have the transformer ready, let's go back to our controller board. Let me explain a few things about this uh, control board. First of all, you're going to need to power the board externally uh, with something like 9 or 12 volts AC. I've noticed uh, professional spot welding machines have uh, an additional uh, secondary winding to provide that voltage. You could probably do that with your transformer uh, or you could add a small uh, AC transformer like I did here. The important thing is that you uh, supply the board with AC because the board does the uh, zero cross detection for switching the output uh, from this auxiliary uh, power input. So supplying DC to this input will turn on the board but will prevent it from working properly because it, it will have no way of uh, doing the zero cross detection. Another thing you'll need is a simple pedal switch. I will add the link to this one in the description below. I got it from AliExpress. It's pretty simple. All you need to do is open it up and add a long wire and uh, connect it to the uh, proper input on the board. The switch in this pedal will uh, be used to trigger the spot welder with your feet after you have uh, correctly positioned the electrodes on the battery tabs. The uh, controller board will turn on or off the primary of the transformer using this onboard uh, triac. This is because the primary uh, or the input of the transformer has lower currents and is manageable with a triac of uh, this size. It might also be a good idea to add a uh, heatsink here on the triac, but please make sure you consider the fact that the heatsink might become live uh, and be connected to high voltages. So uh, you're working with um, high voltage AC here if you're adding a heatsink. After wiring everything together, it's a good idea to run some tests with no load, turn the control knobs on the controller all the way to the minimum and trigger the pedal switch. You can use a multimeter set to AC voltage on the uh, connected to the output electrodes to measure your output voltage. In my case, with four turns on the secondary, I get about 3.5 volts on the secondary, but this varies depending on the settings I apply from the knobs. But this is like an average uh, figure. I can also get below 3 volts if I adjust these to minimum. A lower voltage is fine because it's the current what we need here. And if you use thick uh, wire in the secondary, you will get that high current. Next, I did some test welds while measuring the secondary current. And my cheap clamp meter recorded values of up to 200 amps, which is really unexpected. That is higher than what I get on my Sanko. Uh, spot welder with the same meter. So if you guys are using thicker wire on the secondary like that 25 square millimeter wire that I showed uh, on AliExpress, I'm thinking you can easily get over 200 amps with such a custom build. Unfortunately, the electrodes that I built myself are not good for this purpose. The copper melts slightly at the point of weld and sticks to the battery tabs. So that's why I would recommend either using the proper type of copper if you want to do them yourself or get the ready-made electrodes because I think those are better. For example, I do not have this problem on my Sunco spot welder which uses some special electrodes. But as far as the project goes, it's fully functional. I just need to find a nice enclosure for it which is not easy because the transformer is uh, pretty big 
and um, everything used in here takes up uh, space and I want the enclosure to be metal. Regarding the controller board, um, it's pretty difficult to understand what these two knobs are doing. To me it seems that the first knob controls the length of individual pulses like a duty cycle thing and the second knob uh, just controls like the, the number of uh, cycles that uh, it will stay on. So if you're wondering, here is a uh, scope capture of the triac drive signal imposed over the AC line. In any case, start your tests with both knobs turned to minimum and slowly increase if necessary. Another thing you might want to keep an eye for is the temperature of the transformer as well as the triac. If you use this uh, system continuously, the triac might get hot from switching all of those uh, high currents, so it's best if you add a decent sized heatsink to the triac. Once again, keep in mind it might go at live voltage once connected to the triac. Uh, regarding the transformer, it might get hot if used continuously because it's not built specifically for the purpose we are using it and even if it were, it would still get hot uh, due to the uh, losses in the copper and the high currents that are passing through the um, transformer. So it's recommended that you add a thermal fuse right on the transformer, either on the primary or on the secondary, that would cut the connection if a certain temperature is exceeded, uh, or even better use one of those uh, thermal contacts that reset themselves once the temperature is reduced. And also for protection, use an input fuse, uh, ideally a ceramic one in a nice socket uh, able to contain uh, a potential explosion. Something like 7 to 10 amps should do the job just fine. So here is a, an example of a weld that I'm doing with this machine. Uh, it's set to minimum almost. Uh, it's 30 minimum for the uh, second knob. Uh, for the first knob I believe minimum is uh, 1 and I have it set to 6. So it's barely uh, raised the levels on, the, on those knobs it's really set to a minimum and look at the welds. Now you might see some sparks flying from the welds. Uh, I'm thinking that's due to the copper I'm using as electrodes and you're also noticing it, it kind of sticks to the weld and I have to uh, pry it away from the uh, electrodes. But that happens due to the uh, poor electrodes that I'm using. But the weld itself is really strong as I'm showing here this is a four point weld uh, I cannot break it away from the battery. It's really strong and uh, these should be pure nickel strips um, or so the description said on uh, AliExpress where I got them. So there you go. I uh, did show that it's possible to build a DIY spot welder and if you take care of all of the issues I presented it could work just as well or even better than commercially available machines. It was certainly fun to build this project and I learned a couple of things on the way. I would appreciate some feedback. Let me know what you think in the comments below if you would uh, have done things differently. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.